know, I guess as you go through life, you really find out that life every day when you wake up and when you go to bed, it's a ministry. So uh, if God's guiding you that way professionally, he's still guiding you that way as a ministry. And, you know, at some point you decide how much, uh, how much more serious you want to take it. Yeah, Jamal, uh, Jamal, when I, when I first met Jamal, I saw this incredible athlete. Um, and I kept saying, well, you know, why, why is this guy not at, at a, even a pro level, to be honest with you? Jamal Singleton is a very, very unique individual. I think it's safe to say when I first met Jamal, he probably didn't care for me a great deal. And I know it's safe to say that when I first met Jamal, I didn't care for him a great deal. I'm trying to be, not trying to be too cocky or anything. I feel if you put me in any position and you show me what you need to be done, I'm going to get it done for you. That's, that's all that matters. I'm going to get it done. Uh, what we've seen uh, so far in practice is... Uh... He, uh, he didn't, he had a very selfish attitude. Uh, and then where I saw Jamal's cracks were, were coming from his attitude and, and how he approached the game and how he approached the team and uh, he was just really highly individualistic. Because I'm a young guy, um, they think that I don't know a lot of things. It's kind of funny the way you get into things as a head coach or an assistant coach or a coordinator. Uh, coach Bauer being one of the greatest D3 college linemen that ever played the game uh, has an insight that I don't have when it comes to linemen. And we were trying to get uh, Jamal to grasp the fact that we needed him to be a great lineman, even though he's admittedly possibly the best defensive player on our team and definitely in the top two or three, easy. My goal is to be the best player in the nation, to be better than anybody that lines up against me, and I want everybody to know my name at the end of the day. So I called Coach Bauer and I said, do something with your hog. I just threw it on him. I said, I'm at my wits end with this guy. If it were up to me right now, I'd tell him to take a walk. You know, Coach gave me the opportunity to spend some time with Jamal. And, you know, I think from my background, what I was able to accomplish in college, I kind of broke through to him and I said, you know, buddy, I, I'm, I'm jealous of you. I don't think you realize the talent that you have and, and your God-given abilities but you're getting in the way of yourself. And the way that you're getting in is these guys need a leader. They, they need somebody to, to step up. And uh, Coach Bauer, he always believes the best in these guys. And again, I think that's why they love him. It was a, my first opportunity to love the person, but not accept the behavior or the attitude. And uh, you know, I was, my, was given that strength and, and I held him to that and we started to see some progress and he finally came around and he really bought into it and he's frankly an incredible talent playing right tackle for us uh, and he's bought in from what I can tell uh, you know I'm sure he keeps his tongue a little bitten at times but he's bought in and really seems to enjoy playing it. Honestly I, I'm still against it but the team needs a right tackle. The team and we want to win so I'd rather put the team's needs over my wants. Is a person with an incredibly good heart. I want to save everybody. I believe that I have a hero complex. Um, I believe that I should, if there's ever an issue with anyone, I believe I'm the one that's going to help you. I want to be a firefighter. I want to win a Super Bowl. And I also want to be a police officer. I want to be the staple of a defensive team that wins a Super Bowl. If anybody sees film, they're going to be knocking at his door. And I truly believe that uh, offensively and defensively. Um, I would love to go to college. Yeah, I think that. Not only would it help me football-wise, but I need an education. Education is key. In addition to the fact that he runs about seven miles a day, so he's gone from underachieving to overachieving. Just tells you how much somebody can change and how to never give up on him because, uh, you know, three months ago I was ready to kick him in the butt.
you know, anything that we ask the guys to do, we're right in there with them. You know, we'll get out on the field and condition with them and, and run and do those things with the guys. My role is, is much more of a quiet role when somebody, you know, either gets corrected or is feeling down. I kind of go back around and, and kind of put my arm around him. And I don't want to say the mom-dad approach, uh, but I'm kind of the mom in the situation and, you know, kind of the nurturer and, and try to get them back into in the right frame of mind. My church has actually asked me, um, who do I play for? And, and they, because they know how football players are now, and, and I told them there's, there's nothing like that. It's a big family. Basically, I, I've always been a believer that you can't uh, say things if you're not going to follow through with them. And we try and do that with our faith as well as with the football team. I kind of build them up so that they can hear what he, the message that he's trying to, to get across to the, to the team. I'm seeing the results of what they're making me do, and I want everybody else to enjoy what I'm getting as well. So We practice, we pray together, we eat together, we go out and have fun together. This is a big family. <laughs> I've seen the dance floor cleared out of all the women, all at once. I started dancing like this. <laughs> Whoosh! It's like I'm part of the Red Sea or something. <laughs> I am! No! They're our family. These are young men that have become, in some cases, like sons to us, in some cases, like brothers to us. Um, but in all cases, we are family. This one probably goes back uh, to my dad. And, uh, you know, my dad was, um, he, he, su he suffered a lot through life, including polio and cancer. And, uh, you know, he just had that attitude that, you know, it was an attitude that there was, you had nothing to complain about because there was somebody in a situation that was worse than you. Understand that I'm kind, but I'm not weak. We don't need 50 players. We need 30 that are like Gideon's, Gideon's 300. The lack of self-pity, um, that was amazing. And that's, and that's what I try to get across. And it's very hard to do. Um, but is just to believe in the good of people. Share love with everyone. And, you know, if you, I, you get what you give back, you know, so if you love everybody and then that's, that's what you get back. You know, we don't need big numbers. We need people that fit exactly what we need and we can win a championship with that. I'm gonna rush until my heart busts. I'm gonna give one more rush. <laughs>